Hi there, my name is Angela. Welcome to the channel or welcome back and welcome to another episode of Hashtag Friday Sews. Happy Friday, everyone. I hope your weekend's off to a great start. I have a little bit of sewing to share with you guys and a little bit of life. And if you're ready, let's jump right in. On the sewing front, I am working on my next project, which is, this is an old Butterick pattern, 3515. I am doing the shorts there. And this pattern is, it's pretty old. It's from 94. And I think I've had it since then too. <laughs> Show you the line drawings. They're just very simple shorts. Unisex, which is nice. And I made the long pants version a long time ago, like back in the 90s. And I've had the pattern ever since then. It's size large and extra large. I'm sure that this is out of print, but I'm guessing you can probably find it online here or there. And I'm using a really beautiful plaid cotton. I will see if this fabric is still available. It's been a while since I got it. And I'm, I'm kind of drawing a blank. I probably got it either from Stone Mountain and Daughter or from Style Maker. I'll look it up though and put it in the description box below if it's still available. But it's um, nice to work with. It's just, you know, it's a cotton, so nothing tricky about it. So I've gotten as far as getting the pieces cut out and I'm looking forward to hopefully having that done by next Friday to share with you guys. And in the meantime, I did, um, I had to go to Joanne's this past weekend, earlier in the week, I think, and the day's all kind of running together anymore. Uh, so because my work schedule uh, changes from week to week, generally, so my days, it's really hard to keep it all straight when I'm not on like a fixed schedule every week. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Previously, earlier in the week or the weekend, I went to Joann's for interfacing and they were having McCall's pattern sale for $2.99. So I did pick up a couple of them. I'll show them to you one by one. Uh, the first one is $84.52, cute little skirt. It's kind of like a little cargo skirt. I really like that a lot. Yeah, what does it say? It's just called Mrs. Skirt in Two Links. The fabrics are Dupioni, Lightweight, Nylon, Ripstop, and Taffeta. So, wow. Yeah, I don't know if I will end up making this out of any of those, but here are the line drawings. And I kind of, I kind of like the one that the model's wearing, but I think I would probably do this one. C, so it's A, B, and C. Yeah. I do kind of like that though. The more I look at it, the more I think it's uh it's really cute and maybe I could pull that off. It just it kind of strikes me like as a younger person style, but who knows? Uh the next one is McCall's. This is M8501. This is um a vintage 90s, their vintage pattern reproduction. And it is a little, is it a wrap dress? It's a sarong dress in two lengths. Show that to you there. How cute is that? And the line drawings. And the fabrics for this one. Oh gosh, there's a lot. It's almost like take your pick. Shelly, charmeuse, crepe de chine, handkerchief, linen, jersey, lightweight crepe, lightweight linen, rayon blends, silk silk jacquard soft cotton and cotton blends and tissue file i think you could make that out of just about anything unless it was uh, like a heavy denim or you know a heavy twill or something like that seems like if the fabric is lightweight on the softer side with any amount of drape to it at all you could probably use it for this really cute and when i was getting my interfacing they were doing 50% off of that. I noticed that these were hanging right on the interfacing rack. It's a Pelon little guide to all the different interfacings that they sell. It's a product guide. So if you guys 
ever get as confused as I do when you're looking at the interfacings and it seems like there's a hundred thousand of them to pick from this kind of breaks it down and it looks like everything is color coded and not just color coded on this chart but the end of the bolt the color matches this guide from what I could tell so I grabbed one of these and it also gives some tips and troubleshooting there so that's a little tip if you've never seen those that might be you know worth picking up the next time you're uh, getting your interfacing at least for the Pelon brand and that pretty much sums up my sewing life this past week and everyday life I am you know I'm still puttering around in the garden it's kind of been not the greatest garden year just because we are having a pretty severe drought like all summer it's been like that in the spring we had so much rain uh, that that was kind of a hindrance it hindered everyone from getting their crops out uh, but finally it dried up enough to get things out and now it's like dried up for good <laughs> or so it seems and uh, we just keep plugging along you know some years are like that and that's that's all you can do and other than that i met up with some a couple of old friends of mine i used to work with these two ladies at my corporate job for like 18 years i worked with them and we still meet up every now and then so it was really fun to see them we had uh, lunch at a little cafe and right next door to the cafe was a little um kind of like an antique shop but kind of thrift slash antique there were some things there that would definitely be considered antiques but the prices were not crazy but it was curated very well, like really nicely. So there wasn't a lot of like junk in there, things that are, were in uh, poor quality, poor state anymore. It was, everything was very nicely curated. And I believe that the shop was called The Motley House. I will find their presence online and link that below. Um, it's in Northern Kentucky. So if you're in that area and you just happen to be wanting a new little shop to check out, uh, I would say give them a try. It's not huge. It's kind of on the smaller side, but they really packed it in. While I was there, I picked up a couple of antique books. I am a book junkie, and I think that books probably rival fabric and patterns and garden seeds as far as where like I spend my extra money. It's one of those three things, so garden garden seeds fabric and patterns kind of counting as one and books like i'm just a book junkie the first one is called the go ahead boys on smugglers island look at that it's so uh vintage i'm gonna look up the the copyright date and i'll show you some more of the illustrations in here so this is by ross k and it looks like maybe he's done some other books i don't know if this was a series oh my goodness copyright 1916 and i don't know if this is um like a, an original from 1916 let's see it might be i'm not a book expert although i do like old books there was um so there's this nice little print there I'm going to read you the caption for this. With another growl, the dog advanced upon the boys as soon as they had passed the corner. And it says page 87. So it takes you back to where in the story this happened. And I don't think that there are any other pictures or illustrations. I feel like I'm having to handle this very carefully. I mean, the spine seems like it's in great shape. Like this was a book that was probably, you know, pretty well taken care of. But I'm afraid if I open it too far, it's going to crack the spine. But yeah, how cute is that? And when I'm looking at books, especially if I'm not familiar with the author or I'm not sure about it, sometimes I'll just pop open to a random page and kind of read a couple of the paragraphs just to see if it's um, like written in a style that would be engaging to me and maybe the first page to kind of get a feel like the first 
page of a book kind of sets the tone at least a lot of times it does seem to do that just to kind of gauge what the story uh, feel is going to be like so i thought this looked really easy to read and i'm going to take it on vacation with me later this year so that was the first one and the second one is swiss family robinson i'm sure many of us have heard of this a classic this is another one that's in um really really nice shape no uh, rips or tears the spine is still good and surprisingly i hadn't looked at the copyright dates on these till just now uh, oh gosh this is in roman numerals let me see if i can figure this out uh, 19, 1954, if I'm reading that right. And this one also has an illustration at the front of the book. It's beautiful. I have never read the Swiss Family Robinson or seen, in, I guess there's probably a movie of it, I would guess. Never seen the movie. So I thought, you know, it's about time. But what caught my eye, the spine of the book, they're so colorful and those little uh, illustrations there. But then the front of the book and the back, I'm guessing maybe there was like one of those uh, paper book covers that went with colorful book jackets. But these little animals and illustrations are kind of embossed on there. So I thought that was a good find and the prices were really good too. I also picked up a vintage good housekeeping cookbook from 1955 but that one's down with in the kitchen with my other cookbooks so i was tempted by a few other little like knick-knacky things to put around the house but i had to cap it off at the books so i was very happy with that and i feel like that little store is worth going back to i do get down into that area once in a great while so maybe i'll stop in there again and if you're curious, my top is thrifted. I, I did do a Goodwill trip just yesterday. Found a few tops there. I love thrifting so much. And in fact, I think the majority of my clothes are either thrifted and increasingly more so handmade. So yeah, happy about that. But I like this top a lot. It fits very well. I think it's um, Banana Republic. Sometimes you can find some great uh, like name brands at really good prices when you're thrifting. So it's always fun when that happens. And I guess that's about all I have to share with you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Be sure and come back on Monday for another round of Monday Matchup. And if you're interested in supporting the channel and becoming a channel member, take a look at that. There should be a join button below. And there's a few of us now that are channel members and we have a good time. We do monthly uh, FaceTime chats and you get a little extra content. So if you're interested in a way to support the channel, check that out. Otherwise, I'm just happy that you are hanging out with me and I will talk to you next time. Have a great weekend.